Now let's deal with the lung mechanics and first let's talk about muscles of respiration. The respiratory cycle is composed of inspiration and expiration. It is very important to know that inspiration is an active process meaning it requires muscle contraction. During quiet breathing the major muscle of inspiration is the diaphragm. When a diaphragm contracts during inspiration, this enlarges the vertical dimensions of the chest. Also utilized are the external intercostal muscles of the chest wall. Contraction of these muscles cause the ribs to rise and thus increases the anterior posterior dimensions of the chest. Under resting conditions, expiration is normally a passive process. It is, it is due to the relaxation of the muscles of inspiration and the elastic recoil of the lungs. It doesn't require muscle contraction. Active expiration and coughing is produced by the contraction of the abdominal muscles. This compresses the chest wall down and forces the diaphragm up into the chest. Included would be external oblique, rectus abdominal, internal oblique, and transverse abdominal muscles. Now, in this part of the video, we'll talk about lung mechanics, which is about the forces which act on a respiratory system, providing inspiration and expiration. It is really important to know that in quiet restful breathing there are two opposing forces acting on a lung system. Recoil force and pleural force. Recoil force on the lung always tries to deflate and collapse the lung. The pleural force which is created by negative intrapleural pressure acts to expand the lung. This means these two forces oppose each other recoil trying to collapse the lung and pleural force trying to expand the lung. At FRC both are equal so there is no expanding and deflating force on the lung system and this is considered as a, a neutral or equilibrium state of the respiratory system. To understand how these two forces oppose each other let's see how the respiration occurs. As you already know, the respiratory cycle is divided into inspiration and expiration. Let me draw here a single lung for explanation purposes. In addition, I will make the intrapleural space large because I need this space to add information. So please note that this space is exaggerated here. It is extremely important to know that before you start breathing, I mean at FRC, these two opposing forces are absolutely equal and all respiratory muscles are relaxed. The recoil force trying to collapse the lung is 5. Because the intrapleural pressure at functional residual capacity is minus 5 cm water, we would say that the pleural force is also 5. The pleural force tries to expand the lung. Because of this equilibrium, there is not any pressure on the lung system to collapse or expand the lung. Therefore, the FRC is considered to be the equilibrium state of the respiration. It is important to note that at FRC, the glottis is open and alveoli are in direct communication with atmospheric pressure. Therefore, the alveolar pressure is zero equal to atmospheric pressure. By convention in respiratory physiology, the atmospheric pressure is set to equal zero because it is constant. At this state, no air flows to the alveoli. Before the air goes into the respiratory zone, I mean to the alveoli, the alveolar pressure should be less than atmospheric. It is zero and it should become minus one cm water to suck the air in. You know that the air flows from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure. Let's see how this happens. 
Suppose that we are going to inspire and we will see step by step how inspiration occurs. During every step you have to know what is the intrapleural pressure or pleural force. I will call it expansion force. You have to know the recoil force. I will call it collapsing force. In addition, you have to become familiar with alveoli pressure. In an early inspiration, the first step is contraction of diaphragm. Contraction of your diaphragm pulls the lungs downward. The lungs stretch and this increases the thoracic volume. According to the Boyle's law, the pressure is inverse to volume if we keep the temperature constant. So increasing the thoracic volume decreases the pressure in the thorax. This leads to the second step, decreasing the intrapleural pressure and making it even more negative. It was minus 5 cm water, suppose it becomes minus 8 cm water. Decreasing the intrapleural pressure means that the pleural force increases. It increases from 5 to 8. This force tries to expand the lung. But at this stage, recoil force is still 5. Maybe it slightly increases due to the pulling the diaphragm downward. Nevertheless, suppose it is 5. This force tries to collapse the lung. So the plural force now is more than recoil force, meaning expansion force is more than collapsing force. When a plural force is greater than recoil force, the lung expands. The lung expansion leads to the fourth step, which I will divide into two events. A. Lung expansion increases the recoil force. When a lung is expanded, because the lung is elastic tissue, it tries to get small and collapse. The more you stretch the lung, the more it wants to return back to its resting size, like a rubber band. This is the recoil force which again always acts inward trying to decrease the lung size or trying to collapse the lung. The magnitude of the force is directly proportional to lung size. Expansion increases the force of recoil and the reverse decreases the force of recoil. Lung expansion increases the recoil force, suppose, from 5 to 7. The deflation force is increased, but still it is less than plural force, which is 8. So the lung continues expansion. As for the intrapleural pressure, it is still minus 8 cm water. In addition, the expansion of the lung increases alveolar volume. Based on Boyle's law, the rise in volume causes pressure to decrease. So B. Lung expansion decreases the alveolar pressure. At FRC and in early inspiration it was zero. Now it decreases and becomes subatmospheric, minus 1 cm water. The atmospheric pressure is considered to be zero and now we have this pressure gradient. This pressure gradient is called transmural pressure gradient. We will talk about it later. Because alveolar pressure is now less than atmospheric, air rushes into the lungs because I'm sure you know that the air moves from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure. It is very important to note that lung expands until recoil force increases to equal plural force. The plural force was 8 and the recoil force was 7. Now it becomes 8 as well. When both plural and recoil forces are equal, a new state of equilibrium is achieved. This is called dynamic equilibrium state. It is called dynamics because the lung is expanded. Now this leads to the most important step, returning the alveoli pressure back to zero and airflow stops.
As the air keeps flowing to the lungs because of the pressure gradient, it naturally later returns the alveoli pressure back to zero and will be equal to atmospheric pressure. Before inspiration, alveolar pressure was zero, then it became minus one cm water and air has been flowed to the lungs, and then it again becomes zero. When alveolar pressure equals the atmospheric pressure, the air flow stops. Under resting conditions, about 500 ml of air flows into the lung system in order to return alveolar pressure back to zero. It is very important to note that in clinical practice, in case of restrictive diseases of the lung, the ability of the lung to develop negative pressure decreases. When the lung is not able to make negative alveolar pressure, it is not possible to suck the air into the lung. As a consequence, this leads to the problems with inspiration. The examples of restrictive diseases of the lungs are fibrosis, asbestosis, sarcoidosis, etc. Please note, this is very important that at this state, the lung volume is functional residual capacity plus tidal volume. Next, let's see how expiration occurs. As you try to expire, taking a breath, in this case, the alveolar pressure should become more than atmospheric, it should become more than zero, and the air should be sucked out of the lung because, as you already know, the air flows from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure. Let us see step by step how the process of respiration occurs. The first step in expiration is the relaxation of diaphragm. As you already know, expiration is a passive process. The only thing what you need is relaxation of diaphragm. When a diaphragm relaxes, this decreases the thoracic volume. According to the Boyle's law, again, the pressure is inverse to volume. So decreasing the thoracic volume increases the pressure in the thorax. This leads to the increasing the intrapleural pressure and making it more positive. It was minus 8 cm water, suppose it returns to minus 5 cm water. Increasing the intrapleural pressure decreases the pleural force. Increasing the intrapleural pressure decreases the pleural force from 8 down to 5. On the other hand, recoil force is still 8. It is very important to know that when the recoil force or collapsing force is greater than pleural force, which is expansion force, the lung deflates, the lung collapses. So increasing the recoil force leads to the third step, the lung deflates. Lung deflation leads to the fourth step, which I will divide into two events. A. Lung deflation decreases the recoil force because the lung is no longer stretched as much. It was 8 and now it becomes 6. B. Lung deflation increases the alveolar pressure. Let us see how. When a lung collapses, this causes compression of the alveoli. Compression of the alveoli increases alveolar pressure. In early expiration, alveolar pressure was 0 cm water. Compression of the alveoli increases it up to plus 1 cm water. The atmospheric is considered to be 0. When the alveolar pressure is more than atmospheric, because of this pressure gradient, the air flows out of the lung. As for the intrapleural pressure, it is minus 5 cm water, meaning that pleural force is 5 as well. It is very important to know that the outflowing air returns alveolar pressure towards 0. Before expiration, alveolar pressure was 0, then it became plus 1 cm water, and air has been expired out of the lung, and then it again becomes 0. When an alveolar pressure equilibrates with atmospheric, the airflow stops. Now we will reach the FRC. 
In this state, the recoil force, which was 6 in the previous step, decreases and equals to plural force, 5 to 5. It is very important to know that in clinical practice in obstructive diseases of the lung, the ability of the lung to develop positive pressure decreases. When the lung system is not able to develop positive alveolar pressure, the airflow out of the lung will be difficult. As a consequence, this leads to the problems with expiration. The examples of obstructive diseases of the lungs are emphysema, asthma, and chronic bronchitis. Finally, let's take a look at visual of pulmonary events during the breath. The graph shows four important events during the breath. First, change in lung volume in liters. Second, intrapleural pressure in CM water. Third, airflow in liter per second. Fourth, alveolar pressure again in CM water. I will divide this graph into two parts to see all these events during inspiration versus expiration. During inspiration, when the intrapleural pressure starts falling, the lung volume starts increasing simultaneously. The alveolar pressure begins falling and the air flows to the lungs. When the alveolar pressure reaches minus 1 cm water, at this point there is a greatest air flow to the lungs. This is very important and this is in the middle of inspiration. Then the alveolar pressure begins rising toward zero. The air flows until the alveolar pressure reaches zero. At this point, the air flow stops. During expiration, when the intrapleural pressure starts rising toward minus one cm water, the lung volume starts decreasing simultaneously. The alveolar pressure begins rising and the air flows out of the lungs. When the alveolar pressure reaches plus 1 cm water, at this point there is the greatest air flow out of the lungs. This is in the middle of expiration and is very important to note. Then the alveolar pressure begins falling toward zero. The air flows out of the lungs until the alveolar pressure reaches zero. At this point, the airflow stops.